Today we're going to be taking a look at the Xiaomi Redmi Note 5A. The Note 5A is a budget smartphone, selling at around £75. That's about $100, and yet, on paper, it's packing quite a well-rounded feature set, including a 5-inch HD display, 13 megapixel camera, and a quad-core processor. Now, at this point, I should clarify, Xiaomi has chosen to have quite a confusing range of different but similarly named phones on the market. This is the Redmi Note 5A global version. Anyway, let's open up the box and take a look. This is by no means a premium unboxing experience. The box is small, simple and plain, but you know what? I like that. If I was buying a budget phone, I wouldn't want any frivolous packaging. I want the cost price invested in the handset itself. Inside the box we get the handset, a power supply, this is the Euro version, a micro USB charging cable, and a SIM tray ejector tool. And that's it. Well, apart from a little instruction leaflet, there's no free case, no free screen protector. Those things cost extra. So let's take a look at the handset itself. The front Gorilla Glass is nice, with the speaker grille and the tiny front camera being the only conspicuous features. On the back we get a warning not to try to open the phone, so no user replaceable battery here. The back of the phone looks shiny and metallic, but it is in fact plastic, and it feels a bit cheap and flimsy. Not a great first impression in the hand. Taking a tour around the external features we've got, on the top a headphone jack, and what looks to be an IR transceiver, plus another little hole that I'm not sure about. The manual says nothing. If anyone knows what this is, please let me know. On the right side, we've got the standard volume rocker and power buttons. On the bottom, the speaker grills and micro USB port. Sorry, no USB-C here. On the left, the SIM and expansion tray, which has a surprise in store. Let's take a look. There's room inside for two SIMs plus a micro SD card. That's unusual. A lot more expensive phones have a dual purpose second slot, making you choose between a second SIM or expanded memory. But with the Redmi, you can have both. So let's power it up and take a look what it's like to use. It runs a customized version of Android called MIUI. This is standard for all Xiaomi phones, but you can install your own home screen and launcher app if you prefer. Setup was completely straightforward. The phone does support 3G and 4G, and if you have any questions about whether this will work in your area, please follow the link in the video description. While we're here, we get our first look at the quality of the screen. It seems pretty good. The viewing angle's not the best I've ever seen, but it's more than adequate and certainly poses no problems at all. Now we're set up and at the desktop. The MIUI is clear, modern looking, and it has all of the installed apps on view on one page or another. There's no app drawer. However, as I mentioned earlier, you can install third-party launchers with no problems, if the supplied launcher isn't your cup of tea. MIUI 8.5.5 on this phone is based on Android 7.1.2, so it's surprisingly quite up-to-date for a budget phone. I should mention at this point that the natural light in this shot makes it look like the screen is darker than it actually appears in real life. Although there is some fall off at shallower viewing angles, in person the screen on this phone looks quite nice and does not suffer any of the issues we saw on the ultra cheap Elephone i8. In everyday use the unit seemed functional and capable. Apps launch acceptably fast, considering this is only a quad core CPU, and the touch screen is accurate and responsive with no lag or drag. I didn't test any 3D games or highly demanding apps, as that would be more of a test of my gaming incompetence than a fair test of this phone so you may need to look elsewhere for opinions on that if that matters to you. Video playback in HD is crisp and clear. Audio volume on both the inbuilt speakers and the headphone jack is loud enough without distortion. On to the camera. I ran my usual battery of tests. There's no optical stabilization, so shooting video whilst walking is a bit of a bumpy ride. The footage itself is crisp and clear, full HD with natural looking colours and detail. Focusing is set to manual by default, that's why the close up shot of this hippo is a bit blurry. Once I'd switch it to automatic for the indoor still life video, you can see that it focuses fairly quickly and without too much hunting. Still photos are pretty good, natural colours and good capture of detail. One thing to say about this is the shutter is very quick and responsive. Tap the button and you've taken a photo. This is a refreshing change from many of the other budget phones we have reviewed. Low light video was a bit problematic. The camera struggles to acquire focus in low light, but interestingly when it does focus the footage it captures is smooth and usable. Nice to see no reduction in frame rate was necessary to cope with the poor light. As a phone, call quality and network connectivity were good. Battery life was fair, with more than 50% charge left at the end of a normal day of use. So let's sum up the good versus not so good features of the Redmi Note 5A global version. On the good side, it's tremendous value for money. At this price point, there are usually some weak features in the mix, but everything that's included here works pretty well. 
Top marks to Xiaomi for not just cramming in broken or poorly implemented extras. So there's no lame dual camera or fake bokeh effects here. The screen and form factor are great, that is it's a nice big slim phone for the money. It looks nice in the hand and it sounds good in call and on the inbuilt speaker. It's got a headphone jack which is sure to make some people happy. On the not so good side, the physical build of this phone with its plastic back shell feels just a bit flimsy. I don't think this phone would fare very well without a fitted case but plenty of different third party cases are available and that's all that's needed to make this phone a fairly solid budget offering. Neutral features but worth a mention, micro USB instead of USB-C, just a slight disappointment there but not a complete deal breaker. And there's no fingerprint sensor, other phones in the Redmi 5 range have it but not this model. You may or may not care about this though. The review sample for this video was provided free of charge by Gearbest, however the opinions in this video are entirely my own. If you're interested in buying this phone there's a link in the description. This is an affiliate link, which means if you click and buy that way I get a small commission which helps to support this channel. If you object to that just google up a link and don't click on mine. In summary, I'd say this phone is a pretty decent offering for the money. I particularly like the way that Xiaomi has either properly implemented included features or left them out entirely. If a job's worth doing, it's worth doing well. I hope this has been useful. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.